just give a shout out, Pat, our, our state senator is here. He just stole my chair, actually. So, um, I'm going to stand up here and talk in support of 2C. I'm really standing up here and talking to you in support of 2C because I'm a resident of Denver, and I think that uh, this is, I will be voting in favor of 2C. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions, but I don't work for the campaign. Uh, Liz Adams, who is here, can answer some more specific questions afterwards if, if I don't have the knowledge base to do it. But essentially, 2C, how many of you have visited the stock show uh, ever? More, at least once. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And I bet you, you, your experiences are probably very similar to mine, which are when you go, you don't know where to park, you don't really know how, you know, the, the infrastructure is really congested and very confusing uh, once you get down there. Well, you know, the stock show is 110 <coughs> years old, which uh, really, I think, taps into that Western uh, uh, heritage that, that we should all be very proud of. Um, uh, but it's definitely in, in need of some improvements. And so uh, you, as the voter, are being asked to extend a, a 1.75% uh, tax on lodging and on car rentals that was first approved by voters in 1999. And so what we're gonna, what you're being asked to do is, is to extend that. Now there is no sunset on that, and so I think it's important for you to know that. Um, but so when, when, the, when you see advertisements and when you read uh, in the pamphlet that it's no new taxes, um, that is correct, it's not a new tax, it's an extension of an old tax. But well, that's to raise uh, money for what will end up being a very expensive project, but one that I think is, is very worthy um, of this extension of the tax. Because you're extending the tax and then you're going to bond against it. And you're going to improve things like uh, roads and bridges, and you're going to consolidate railroad tracks. You're going to actually open up uh, one mile of the South Platte River um, that's never really been uh, uh, accessible by the public before. Uh, the city is going to partner with the Army Corps of Engineers and the, uh, the Greenway Foundation, who has done wonderful improvements to the South Platte in the uh, southern portion of House District 2 and all along the South Platte. Uh, you're also going to improve infrastructure on the complex. You're going to expand it from 120 to like 270 acres. And there's a partnership with CSU to bring in an, education, uh, an, an educational facility to really lead the way on, on vet science, on uh, sustainable agriculture, which as we continue to move forward um, on, on water issues and we look to our western uh, border in the United States and see all the problems that California is having, and we understand that 75 to 85 percent of our water usage is, is used by the agricultural community, we have to find more sustainable ways uh, to, to farm. And, and so this, this complex will lead the way in research around the state, also bring in new jobs and, uh, and, and new opportunity. I think lastly, uh, you know, a great opportunity is the fact that we'll be able to use uh, the complex uh, all year long. I think originally that's what it was uh, envisioned to do, but because the infrastructure is old, uh, because it's, it's pretty hard to access, um, uh, the, the vision is that from conferences to uh, a bunch of different uh, opportunities that people will be using this, um, uh, this site uh, all year long. It's going to take a while to complete it because you're going to go in stages and you're going to want to, you know, the, the city's going to make sure that we can still hold the stock show on an annual basis. Um, but as we get towards the end, these are improvements that, in my opinion, the northern part of Denver uh, is in desperate need of. And I think it's, it's time to invest uh, in um, uh, Swansea and Globeville uh, because those are, those are neighborhoods that will really benefit, in my opinion, uh, from these improvements. You're going to hear about how expensive this is. You're going to hear that we should be spending the money on other things. Um, uh, you should hear, you know, you might hear that, you know, it's not worth the amount of tax and therefore we should do a, a, a check to everybody and put a thousand dollars in everyone's pocket. Um, you know, I think in the end, you know, these are economic improvements that are going to benefit generations and it's going to go deep into the future. Much, much, it's going to have a more of an impact on our community than a one-time stimulus check in your pocket. Remember when George Bush cut us a stimulus check uh, on, uh, in like 2007, we all got $1,000? Uh, 
Um, you know, uh, that was cool for like a month, but uh, uh, it certainly didn't prevent, um, you know, what he was trying to prevent. So I, I urge you to support this. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Chris, I saw your hand first. Uh, or both Chris's, so I'll go Chris and then Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so a question, follow-up. The tax is it a Denver City tax or is it a state tax? I'm sorry, it's a Denver City tax, 1.75% on uh, the lodging tax and on the rental car tax in the city and county. Denver. Yeah, it's going to hit tourists. I mean, I don't know, sometimes you rent cars if your car's in the shop or something, and sometimes you do one of those. But city, you know. not state. Correct. Thank you. I really like so many parts about what you see wants to accomplish. I do have one reservation. The original draft of this bill included the expansion of the bed tax to 1.75% from 2023 to 2038. It was a 15 year extension on something we still had eight years the last time we pledged it. The bill as it's written right now, the proposed amendment as we're going to vote on it, will change that 1.7 tax not into an end point, but into perpetuity. Correct. So bed taxes, if new revenue were ever to come from bed taxes toward new initiatives, will have to add to it. We'll never get a say again at the voter level on where that particular tax will go once we're done committing the $100 million towards the convention set. That's correct. And completely there, there is project, that too. Right. But commingled in something that is so good and so ambitious, why it might look like that. But where was the thought behind that? It's to me almost a poison pill for this initiative. I mean, I think that's a good question, and that's why I wanted to make sure that I highlighted that um, when we were talking about the extension of the tax. Um, uh, again, $100 million of this will also go towards improvements to uh, the convention center downtown um, to remain. It's another cornerstone of our sort of tourist industry here in Denver. Again, I don't work for the city of Denver, I'm just a resident. Uh, but those improvements are increased uh, meeting space on the roof, actually expanding, some, it's not even expansion, but it's, it's, it's increasing um, uh, some of the meeting space on the roof of the convention center and then also doing technology upgrades so that uh, people uh, have access to Wi-Fi and, and all those other things that you would expect if I'm sitting in an all-day conference that I would have access to fantasy football or something else <laughs> that I would want to uh, try to use my time. Um, but I think that's a good question, and I guess my question to uh, Liz and or Pet, um, who might know more of this than I do, is, is one or, yeah, or, oh yeah, or Mary Pet. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, I guess, I guess my question, which I don't know the answer of, is once uh, the obligations are paid off, but this tax continues to go on in, in perpetuity, uh, could those revenues be used to go towards somewhere else? Well, you know, Liz is the is uh, official spokesperson for that. I'm throwing this head off. <laughs> It says that after we, we meet our obligation with the bond for this project, that the money will be used for tourism-related um, projects. So that's a pretty broad term, and that is placing responsibility on our representatives and city council to decide what those tourism-related um, items are. I personally, this is I'm going to give you a personal opinion, but it also I think it explains a little bit of the of the in perpetuity piece. Um, Tabor requires us to return to the voters for a new tax and a, an extension of a tax is essentially falls under taper or something that we're required to get approval of the voters. So I think some of us have to ask the question, in 3038, do we want to spend another million five, or that's basically what the budget for this campaign has been, to take it back to the voters for something that we're very likely to approve again because we're very likely to have um, other tourism related things that, that we're going to do. And so, you know, that's something that you have to ask yourself. It, is that something that you wanted to, you know, we would spend more money to put it on the ballot to run a campaign in favor of it? Um, or against it. People yeah. have, can, have yeah. campaigns against it as well. So and we could, though. We could decide in 2044 that we want to disband it. If right. We it. right, right, right. Yeah, so you could, in reverse, you could put it on, on the ballot to, to take it away. Um, and, and so, the point is, is that this leaves the responsibility with the representatives that we've elected to make decisions about the future use of this money, just as they make 
decisions about the use of other revenues that we bring into the city that are in perpetuity, a sales tax, for instance. Great. So